The Euphrates is once again in the news. Yes, the same Euphrates where it all began in the Garden of Eden, and which has long played a major role in the development of many great civilizations. But this river, which has long been a source of survival, is drying up, but what just happened to it is more shocking. Curious to know? Then stay tuned to the unknown facts to check out what exactly is happening with the Euphrates River that is even shocking scientists. Let's get started. The Euphrates surpasses the Tigris as Southwest Asia's longest river. From its beginning in Turkey to its end in Iraq, including some territory in Syria, it is estimated to be roughly 2,800 kilometers in length. Its hydrological basin spans around 500,000 square kilometers, including land in all three countries, plus parts of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. The confluence of the Karasu and Murat rivers at an elevation of almost 3,000 meters is its origin, not a lake or glacier. Heading south-southeast, the river meets up with the Tigris in northern Basra, Iraq, forming the Shat al-Arab, which flows into the Persian Gulf. Only three rivers in Syria contribute to its water supply, the Sajur, the Balik, and the Jabur, the last of which is the most significant because it carries the most water. As soon as the Euphrates enters Iraq, it receives no additional tributaries. Rainwater and snowfall are the primary sources of water for the river, with the aforementioned larger rivers and a few smaller streams also contributing. The Armenian highlands receive the majority of their annual precipitation during the months of April and May, and this is when the water flow is at its highest. At its peak, the velocity can reach 2514 M3S, whereas on average it moves at 356 M3S. Chapter Evolution the source of the Euphrates is a mystery. This process of water settling and sediments being deposited in consecutive layers began as early as the Cretaceous, when a depression known as the Structural Trench was formed. Sometimes in the early Miocene, a narrow strait joined the Proto-Mediterranean to the oceanic basins of modern-day northwest Syria and nearby Turkey. For many generations, it has sustained humanity as the blue gold of its time. The civilizations that flourished on its outskirts are largely forgotten now. Over the years since its birth in Turkey, the river's flow has steadily slowed. Cities of Muslims, Christians, Kurds, Turkmens, and Judeo-Arabs have flourished there and along the Jabber River, its main tributary. Some of the earliest evidence of human habitation has been uncovered here. Species of plants and animals found in the Euphrates River region. Like the Tigris, the Euphrates is notable as a body of water due to its location in the center of a vast desert. But because of the water and its influence in the river valleys, a fertile zone was formed, which is now included in the historical region known as the Fertile Crescent, whose crescent shape extends from the Tigris-Euphrates to parts of the Nile in Egypt, through Assyria, and north to the Syrian desert and the Sinai Peninsula. Chapter The Economic Importance Many cities in the Middle East were built along the Euphrates, and some of them still rely on the river today. The fertile soil around it is used to grow food, especially cereals like wheat and barley and trees like fig trees. It's important to have access to clean water for things like drinking, bathing, cooking, and even catching fish. All these factors explain why the river has been used for commerce ever since ancient times, despite the fact that its waters are too shallow for large ships. Hit, an Iraqi city, is currently reachable by boat. Electricity to cities in Iraq, Syria, and Turkey is reliant on the construction of hydroelectric plants, making this an essential part of the regional economy. Over two-thirds of the water in the Euphrates, basin is put to productive use, including hydropower, agriculture, and human consumption. Chapter Threats the river's discharge has been altered by numerous dams and irrigation systems, particularly upstream, and it is feared that the river's water supply will run out long before it reaches Iraq. Turkey, Syria, and Iraq are in a dispute over who has the right to use the river's water, and the region's worst drought in decades is hitting its final stretches especially hard. The marshes and swamps close to Basra have also been nearly eradicated since the 1990s, when Saddam Hussein allowed them to drain in an effort to drive out many Arabs. Air pollution is a concern, and so is river pollution. Salinity in Iraq rivers rises with distance from the source, as a result of wastewater discharges from agriculture, industry, and homes. Chapter What the Bible Says And the sixth angel poured out his vial on the great river Euphrates, 
and its water dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. KJV Revelation 16, 12. The great river Euphrates would dry up according to this chapter of Revelation. Many times, events in the past are shadows of events that will occur in the future. This is why the Bible is thought to be alive. Not only could an exact event have occurred in the past, but it can and frequently will occur again. So what does all this mean for us? Continue reading to learn more. Loose the four angels who are bound in the great river Euphrates. The sixth angel with the trumpet said, And the four angels were released, who had been prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year, to slay the third part of mankind. There will come a time when one-third of men will die in a year, month, day, and hour. Please keep in mind that while we may see things happen in the natural world, we must also consider what this means in the spiritual realm. We cannot simply say, oh, the river is dried up. What else does this mean spiritually? Let us examine what the Bible says about water. And he says to me, the waters that you saw were the whore sitteth, and peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. KJV Revelation 17.15 According to the Bible, the waters represent people and a variety of different speaking nations. When we look at our world today, we see an increasing number of people who support evil. This is not limited to a single region of the globe. It's widespread. The kingdom of darkness has been persuading people to participate in evil, and we can clearly see it progressing. It prepares the way for the kings of the east, the scripture says in verse 16:12. Let us first consider where we can find the Euphrates River in the natural world. It begins in Turkey and travels through the country to the southern part of Iraq. So if we look at all the countries to the east of Israel, we can see that they are frequently identified as countries that do not get along with them. Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Jordan are just a few examples. However, if we examine the spiritual meaning of the river drying, we can see that it can also be applied to many people of various nations who are opposed to God's people. This would include Christians as well as Jews. Our spiritual foe despises both God's chosen people, the Jews, and Christ's followers. In a spiritual sense, the drying up of the river represents a severed connection or separation from the one who gives life. God is the source of life. As the Lord's return approaches, we can see a clear distinction being drawn between his followers and those who oppose him. They will despise the whore. Models of the climate suggest that in the future, this region will be hit with even more severe droughts, which may result in the river completely drying up. The development of huge dams further upstream in Turkey is another factor that has contributed to the decrease in water levels in the Euphrates. Because of a series of dams that the Turkish government has constructed on the river's upper reaches, the amount of water that flows downstream has been considerably cut back. This has resulted in significant ecological and environmental problems, such as the destruction of wetland areas, a fall in the number of fish populations, and the salinization of soils. The depletion of the Euphrates River's water supply is having a significant and negative effect on the people and towns that rely on the river. Irrigating crops is becoming an increasingly challenging task for farmers, while millions of people are being forced to deal with water scarcity issues, particularly during the warmer months of the year. Because the river is home to a diverse population of fish, birds, and other aquatic animals, there are also concerns regarding the impact that the development will have on the region's biodiversity. Another Perspective The water level in the Euphrates River has decreased to dangerously low levels during the past few years. Water is currently flowing into Syria from Turkey at a rate of less than 200 cubic meters per second, which is less than half of the quantity that Turkey and Syria agreed upon in 1987. Abdul Razak al aliawi an engineer and former director of Syria's Euphrates River Maintenance Department, told Al Monitor that the riverbed has seen six historical eras, including the Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian, Greek, and Byzantine periods, in addition to the Islamic era. Al Aliawi used to head up Syria's Euphrates River Maintenance Team. Dams, in his opinion, were an unjust decision to begin with. Under Yusuf Zayn's leadership in Syria in 1968, the Euphrates Dam was built without first diverting the river away from the desert and forming lakes there. Aliawi, on the other hand, 
claimed that the lake that was generated as a result of the dam had a length of 100 kilometers and a width of 8 kilometers and had flooded the most famous ancient ruins that were placed along the river. Some historical sites and artifacts survived the destruction, although only barely. He said many cemeteries are located in this area, which is also thought to feature hundreds of Syriac Christian monasteries and the water level is continuing to drop. When the lake is calm and the sun is out, you can see the gravestones from the cemeteries that are still submerged. It has been possible to dig on the right bank of the lake in the western part of Raqqa, where a few cemeteries have been found, but he warned that the left bank is rockier, making it impossible to carry out digging efforts. In Anna, Iraq, the remnants of the ancient city of Talbez became visible in July, when the Euphrates River began to recede. An Iraqi archaeologist by the name of Mohammed Jassim said that after the water level in the Haditha Dam was lowered, at least 80 historical sites that had been underwater were uncovered. The Department of Antiquities in Dohuk, Iraq's Kurdistan region, said on June 6 that they had discovered a city belonging to the Mitanni Empire that had been underwater for 3,400 years. When the Tigris River Basin dried up, the city was revealed. Dohuk Department of Antiquities Director Bex Privkani told reporters on June 6 that Zakiko, the city's former name, was recorded in ancient Babylonian documents. He claims that there are other structures, including a palace, inside the compound's extensive fence. Last year, the water level of the Kaban Dam Lake on the Euphrates River in the An region of eastern Turkey dropped so low that the old Hastek Castle, which can only be reached by boat, was exposed to the surface of the lake. It is thought that the castle was originally a temple from before the Christian era, as stated by Cork Maz San. In conclusion, the drying up of the Euphrates River is a serious issue that has significant implications for the people and ecosystems that depend on it. While natural fluctuations in water levels have always been a special feature of the river, the current decline is being accelerated by human activities, including climate change and the construction of dams upstream. This is leading to water shortages, ecological degradation, the social and economic impacts on the communities that rely on the river for their livelihoods. That's all for this video. Like it and share it with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.